Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. First tonight, questions have been raised over whether David O'Byrne should permanently step down as leader of the Labor Party. The Greens say his position is no longer tenable as Labor investigates accusations of sexual harassment made against him. No longer in the leadership chair, David O'Byrne knocked down the ranks, taking his new seat in Parliament. Mr O'Byrne has temporarily stood down as Labor leader and I have assumed the role of acting leader. Anita Dow also taking responsibility for his shadow portfolios as the Labor Party investigates sexual harassment allegations levelled against him. Reading from a pre-written statement yesterday, the Franklin MP apologised to the woman. At the time of the reported events, I genuinely believe the kiss and the text exchanges to be consensual. However, I, I now understand that this was not the case. The Greens today raising the matter in Parliament. Nowhere in Mr O'Byrne's statement um, is there any unreserved apology for the abuse of his power over a young female junior employee. Questioning whether he should step down permanently. We don't believe his position is tenable anymore. We need to make sure in this parliament um, that we're sending the right message uh, into the community and, um, and the right message to women. The allegations are concerning, uh, but it's a matter for David O'Byrne how he responds to that and it's a matter for the Labor Party how they respond. It's unclear how the investigation within the Labor Party will be conducted or how long it will take. My view is that they need someone like Michael Field, an elder statesman who is outside the factional system. That would give it independence and some integrity and that's probably what they need for whatever solution they come up with. As Parliament goes into its winter break, it's sure to be a long seven weeks for Labor. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. Public Health has made no changes to Tasmania's strict border closures as COVID cases interstate continued to rise overnight. High-risk locations have been identified in every state and the Northern Territory. More than a dozen areas in Queensland remain locked out, including Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Tasmania also continues to be shut to Western Australia's Perth and Peel regions and Alice Springs. Public Health has warned more areas could be added to the list of sites if the virus continues to spread. Tasmanians are being encouraged to hand in unregistered guns as part of the National Firearms Amnesty. A drop-off point will be held at Greenpoint Shopping Precinct in Bridgewater, allowing the public to hand them in without fear of prosecution. We don't care where they come from. Our objective is very clear to engage with the public, get the firearms off the street. If they're unwanted or illegal, that's what we want to do. The reality is whether unwanted, unregistered or illicit, firearms can be found everywhere in the community. Tasmania was the first state in the nation to implement a permanent firearms amnesty. From today, Tasmanian doctors will be allowed to prescribe a medicinal cannabis, with advocates saying countless people will be relieved from pain. But the peak body of GPs is concerned evidence into the drugs is still lacking and wary of the change. Trying to put an end to her daughter's 30 daily seizures, Nicole Cowell says she's been forced to source cannabis illegally for years. It's very difficult and it's frightening because if Alice doesn't get her cannabis, Alice is at an increased risk of dying. She's not alone, with many forced into that position after pharmacy drugs made no difference to their conditions. There's nothing more distressing than, than watching your child and being able to do nothing to, to save them. For advocates, today brings hope, with Tasmanian doctors now allowed to prescribe it. We expect probably most of the demand will come from people who have chronic non-cancer pain. But for GPs, it comes with concerns over a lack of evidence and regulations, they say, don't give them a clear directive on how to prescribe it. That puts us in a little bit of a hard uh, situation where we want to do the best by our patients, but we really need to know that what we're doing, if we do prescribe medicinal cannabis, is in their best interest. Whatever rules and regulations are in place should be abided by. Advocates say the cost is still prohibitive. So with a child like my Alice, for me to access cannabis through a doctor, it would cost upwards of $25,000 a year. Believing the government should subsidise what they label a life-saving cure. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. 
Tasmania is set to further strengthen its relationship with New Zealand, with a trade mission to depart in September. The process is now underway to choose around 20 businesses to take part in the five-day trip. The mission aims to boost opportunities in manufacturing, defence, energy and tourism, with direct flights to Auckland already providing a boost to the state. The direct flights from Auckland to Hobart present a great new market opportunity. We've already seen quite a bit of interest from that market with the flights that are uh, in play. The government is also hoping to see New Zealand open up other international trade routes using Auckland to transport our products to the US, Eastern Asia and the South Pacific. Environmental activists have met with the Federal Environment Minister at the site of a proposed tailings dam in the Tarkine Rainforest. Bob Brown and opponents took Susan Lee through the Tarkine as they push for an alternative site for the dam. The two existing tailings dams at MMG's Rosebury Mine are almost full and another is needed to keep the mine operating beyond 2024. Riders will grip onto gravel in a new off-road cycling event heading to the northeast this weekend. What's called the Devil's Carnigan will see riders take road bikes off the beaten track, travelling 95 kilometres from Derby onto Ringaruma before finishing at Branksholm. Hopefully everyone has a big dirty grin from ear to ear because it's going to be a challenging, uh, the course itself is quite challenging and the weather is looking like it's uh, turned up to play as well. So there's going to be some chesting moments out there. Gravel riding is becoming more popular around the world as riders seek scenery and exercise. Registrations are still open for the event on Saturday. Sweeping changes have been proposed for Tasmania's Aboriginal heritage laws after they were found to be amongst the most outdated in Australia. A review of the 1975 legislation said it lacked clarity and needed an overhaul. It found Aboriginal heritage should be considered in the early stages of planning and development to be better protected. The government says it's accepted the report's findings and is working towards making improvements. Hobart has become the first Australian city to ban single-use plastic products for takeaway containers. The move coming into effect today, with all businesses now required to use compostable alternatives or face potential fines. Coffee has never tasted so good in the state's capital. Hobart City Council implementing new measures, becoming the first in Australia to ban single-use plastic for takeaway food packaging. Our bylaw will take out 10 million bits of single-use plastics just in Hobart. Once the whole nation is using compostables and not single-use plastics, we're talking billions of bits of single-use plastics. Darchi and Darchi, just one business reducing its impact on the environment, using alternatives to everything from cutlery to cups, straws and condiments. We've always been very concerned about the environment and about waste. We would never waste anything. And in a business, you always govern it by your own ethos. The ban officially coming into effect today, with strict measures in place to ensure everyone complies. Our environmental health officers do go around to businesses and check on a whole range of things, so this will just be part of the checklist of things that they look at. And Hobart's not the only council saying goodbye to plastic. Launceston has a policy to ban it by the middle of next year. We as a council will cut back on it, and but also all the events that we sponsor and all the activities in our facilities. Bernie also moved a motion last month, recommending all councils adopt the ban by 2022. Elizabeth O'Neill, 7 Tasmania News. Hello again. The Jack Jumpers have landed their first senior player, locking in Sam McDaniel from Melbourne United. The six foot four guard has a Tasmanian pedigree, with Dad Wayne playing for the Tassie Devils. The recurring question finally has an answer. Who will the Jack Jumpers pick first? Melbourne, run the floor on mass. It's McDaniel. Sam McDaniel, six foot four, one hundred and two kilos, and a reigning champion, being plucked from the NBL's star-studded Melbourne United. I take pride in in playing defence, um, and that's kind of been my role. Um, at Melbourne. Although he gleefully let the Jack Jumpers through to the hoop, finding a knack with coach Scott Roth, who acted quickly after the NBL finals. We also talked about expanding my offensive game as well, which is something that um, I've been wanting to do. Um, so looking forward to getting down there with Scott and, and working with the guys. Sam was born in Hobart. Dad Wayne played for the Devils. McDaniel, he's hot tonight. 
Now he's ready to make his own legacy. To cricket, Jeff Bourne has resigned as Tasmanian Tigers coach to take up a job with the national team. He will be an assistant to Justin Langer with his first summer to include an Ashes series and the Hobart Test with the visiting Afghanistan. To cycling... Richie Port set a ripping pace in the Stage 5 time trial in the Tour de France. Richie is charging. And crushing the 27 kilometres in the ninth fastest time. Richie returns. He's in contention. He's got his legs on. And he could barely breathe afterwards. Yeah, it was uh, nice to uh, get that time trial out of the way. He lifts from 41st to 25th overall. Matthew Vanderpool remains overall leader with an eight-second buffer. And Josh Green will be free to play for Clarence this week, along with Ethan Jackson and Jason Bailey after serving a week's suspension. The Roos coach takes heart out of the game against Launceston, where the young side stayed with the top team until the final term. Our intensity and our, our willingness to want to compete and defend as a team over the last three weeks it's been really poor um, and we took a relatively inexperienced group up to Windsor Park and it just shows that if you do bring that intent that you can challenge anyone. Clarence's game against North Hobart will see Baxter Norton come up against his old club for the first time. Anyone that leaves your club I don't think you ever forget so whenever you come up against them it's going to be a tough fiery contest. And North Launceston has Billy Edmonds in mind to line up against Glenorchy's Harrison Gunther. What you may not know, Edmonds is hearing impaired. His switch to the back lines this season has been a masterstroke for the talented tall. And I thought if we just give him playing back, he can see the game and he doesn't have to worry about communication. If he just locks down as a defender, goes for his marks, what, that's what he does really well. Um, we just thought it'd be more beneficial and, and we saw early on that it was going to work pretty well for us. The Pies and Northern Bombers are at KG5 on Saturday, a 1.30 game. To AFL now, the ailing Gold Coast has lost six of its past seven games and tonight is another tough task. Richmond will be hungry to restore some pride after that 60-point loss to St Kilda last week. It is technically a Suns home game after changing from Metricon Stadium to Marvel. And you can catch the game live and free after the news. Port Adelaide has settled into its new Melbourne surroundings with a training session this afternoon. They'll use Essendon's facilities and while the club is hopeful of returning on Sunday, players are prepared for a longer stint. The club's been pretty clear in uh, making sure that we're ready for, to be here for two weeks and then anything less than that is probably a bonus for the, the guys that do have families and, and want to get home. So, um, you know, I'm in the mindset that we're going to be here for two weeks and anything less than that um, is, a, yeah, like I said, a bonus. Trent McKenzie and Connor Rosie are both under injury clouds, while Tom Clary is the chance to come back in. And the club is confident former Power Premiership player Sean Burgoyne's incredible 400th game milestone won't be a distraction. A player that uh, a lot of Port fans will remember really fondly. So, um, you know, it's a, a nice coincidence, I guess, to, for him to play against us. But, um, you know, we're firmly focused on, um, you know, getting the four points and then um, congratulating him on his achievements afterwards. Port plays Hawthorne on Saturday night. Good evening, Dunalley, Campania and Friendly Beaches on top today with 18 degrees. Hobart 17, Launceston 16, Burnie and Devonport 15. Most temperatures above average, some in the southeast by 5 degrees. Flinders Islands and Helens and Grove 17, Smithton and Low Head 16, King Island and Strawn 15, Bushy Park 11. Cloud extended over most of Tasmania, more widespread over the central, the west and the south. A trough of low pressure brought cloud to eastern areas of the nation. The next large expanse of cloud is with a front and low south of the bite. Tomorrow, the front moves to be near our west coast, a low to the southwest, and a trough following through. Another trough sits over eastern states. The northeast northwesterly winds will turn more westerly in the afternoon, not before reaching 15 to 25 knots over the west and south. A strong wind warning has been posted for that region between southeast Cape and Stanley. Hobart for Friday, a top of 14, a cloudy one, Hewanville the same, 15 the top for Campania. Launceston, a high of 14 degrees with showers, Devonport the same, 14 for Georgetown with showery conditions. Burnie 14 with showers, Strawn 15, Wynyard showers as well, 14 the maximum. St Helens a high of 15 with a late shower, partly cloudy for Swansea, 14 the top for Port Arthur. To the weekend now on Saturday, partly cloudy over the southeast, but showers expected elsewhere, possible hail and snow to 800 metres. Showers developing over the west in the afternoon, uh, that'll be on Sunday, but uh, clearing the north, mainly fine for the rest of the state. The wind shifting west southwesterly though, and on Monday, fine, cool and partly cloudy, just a shower over Strawn and King Island. 
Island. Partly cloudy in Perth, showers for Adelaide and later on in the day in Melbourne, partly cloudy in Sydney, a top of 19, and rain at times in Brisbane. Mostly clear in Hobart, 11 at the moment, 11 and partly cloudy in Launceston, 12 currently in Devonport. That's the weather, Kim, for the first day of dry July. My dry July lasted uh, 16 hours. I'm sure you'll see the whole month out.